Hi, welcome back to video 4.3. We're talking about logarithmic properties. Um, so just recall, you know, again, here are those exponent properties that I keep making you guys go through over and over and over again. Um, but it's because I want you to know that having this in your head is what's going to be the difference between getting through this unit um, easily and not getting through this unit so easily. So just know that you have these in your head, that you're practicing these, that you're recalling these properties. You make flashcards, something. You find some way to recall these. Okay, so some properties of logs, um, we're going to talk about three different properties, our product property, our uh, quotient property, and our power property. We're also going to simplify, expand, and condense, which we're going to use those three properties to kind of go one way or the other. And we're going to learn about our change of base formula, which you will need a calculator for or some sort of online calculator. And again, those online calculators can be found on my website. Um, so don't just think that you're like, thrown to the wolves on that. They are on my website, but you can always Google the phrase Mathway or SimboLab or Wolfram Alpha. I think that's also Mathway though, um, or, or Desmos. And there's other online calculators out there too. Okay, so here's our product property quotient and our power property. So what does that look like? Product means multiplication. So this means that if I have a log um, that has a multiplication within the parameters, I can split that up and actually add them or vice versa. Um, so that would be an expansion or, or a condension. Same with quotient. If I'm dividing, I can subtract. And hey, where do these properties look familiar from? These are the same properties that we have in exponents, um, but we're just applying them a little differently. However, my power property is different than my exponents. So if I have something to a power, I can actually take that power and rip it to the front. And so that's that power property. Um, but let's actually apply them. So here are some properties. And I want and for both of these problems, I'm going to express them in terms of ln of 2 and ln of 3, um, or at least for this question. So how would I do that? ln of 54 is the same as saying the ln of uh, 2 times 3 cubed. And how did I get that? Well, I just found factors um, that would get me down to 2 and 3. So what multiplied by 54, multiples of 54 would get me down to 2 and 3. Well, first I got down to 2, and then I found out that it's multiple of um, 27, 2 times 27, sorry, its multiple of 27 could actually be broken down into 3 cubed. And how does that help me? Well, here's my product. That's the product right there. And here's a power rule. So I can actually strip it down first into my product rule of ln of 2 plus ln of 3 cubed. And now I'm going to deal with that power rule where I can rip it to the front. So that becomes ln of 2 plus 3 ln of 3. And that's it. That's all we were doing with this question. And that's all we're going to be doing for the next um, various few slides. And pretty much this whole video is just using those three properties to just manipulate our, our logs. Okay, I've got one more for us, the ln of 9 over 8. And so again, what can I do to 9 to make it look like 3? Well, that's 3 squared. What about 8? That's 2 uh, cubed. 2 cubed is 8. So that becomes the ln of 3 squared over 2 cubed which is a quotient property right there, right? That's our quotient rule, which tells me I can subtract. So that's the ln of 3 squared minus the ln of 2 cubed. And then I can use the power rule to rip it to the front for both of them, actually. So that becomes 2 ln of 3 minus 3 ln of 2. That was a little bit confusing because there's a lot of 3s and 2s all over the place. But I hope you were able to follow that because I think I have a you do for you. Here you go. Could you break this down into its log properties of 5 and 3? And I'll give you a hint. Um, you would want to separate it down to 3, right? 3 into 75 is 25. And what can you do to 25 to make it a multiple of 5? There's my hint for you. Here's another you do. Um, this one's a little bit harder. And so this one, I would say, I know it's a you do, but I'm going to actually do it for, uh, I'm going to give you the answer so you can, you can double check. And I know I don't usually give answers, but here is that answer if you want to attempt this one to see if you get the same answer. Okay. Here's another thing that you can do with those properties. You can actually simplify your logs using the properties we did last video as well as the properties we do this video. So log base 4 of the fifth root of 64. Okay, well, how can I rewrite the fifth root of 64? That's the same as saying log base 4 of 64 to the 1 fifth. 
Okay, well, now here's a power property, right, um, that I could move. But before I move it, why not deal with it? Why not deal with that 64? What's another way I can rewrite 64? Um, it, it, it's multiples, right? Well, what number would I want to relate it to? Probably the base. Did you know that 64 could be written as 4 cubed? So I'm going to rewrite that as log base 4 of 4 cubed to the 1 fifth. And why did I do it that way? Well, because I can take this, um, I can deal with this exponent property right here, three times one fifth. So that becomes log base four of four to the three fifths. And now what can I do? I can rip that power property up front and that becomes, I'm gonna move over here, three fifths log base four of four. But look what's happening. What's log base four of four? We know that that's equal to one. Therefore, that's just three fifths. And that's my end answer. Got another one. And then I do have two or one or two that I left for you guys to do. And again, I'm hoping that you really, truly try them. I know these are hard. I understand that. Um, but I really do hope you try. So again, here, I'm going to look at my same properties just because it's natural log does not change the fact that these properties exist. So uh, I can look at this as the power property of logs. And so that becomes, uh, I can bring this two over and I can bring this three over and that becomes two times five ln of e minus three ln of e. And now I can multiply this. So that's 10 ln of e minus three ln of e. And what do I know about the ln of e? Look at its natural basis. Now that they're by themselves, I can cross those out. That becomes 10 minus three, which is simply seven. Here we have a you do. Um, just a reminder, this can be written as 36 to the one third. So I hope that helps you solve this because 36 can be written as a multiple of six. Six to the what equals 36. Okay, again, I, this is a you do for you guys. That's a power rule right there. I highly recommend you deal with that first. Okay. Now let's talk about expanding logs. So expanding logs, um, you take what was once compressed and you're going to pull it out as far as you can. Okay, and then we're going to do the opposite in just a few slides and we're going to compress. And so sometimes we have questions like this. There are definitely test questions like this. So make sure you can do this. So this is log of 12 times x to the fifth. Um, and up there it's to, oh, I think I typed this wrong. This should have been. 12x to the fifth, y to the negative two. That's what this whole thing should have been, okay? So that means there's a product right here, right here, and right here. So that becomes log of 12 plus log of x to the fifth plus log of y to the negative two. Then I can deal with these powers up here. So that becomes log of 12 plus five log of x minus two log of of y. And that's our end answer. Pretty easy, right? I've got another one, got a little bit harder. Okay, so I look at this and that's a quotient right there. That's a division right there. So that actually could be written as ln of x squared minus ln of four, oh, sorry, the square root of 4x plus one. Now we can deal with this. This is a power property, but how can I deal with this square root? Well, if I remember that the square root of something is equal to x to the one half, then I can rewrite this part as ln of 4x plus one to the one half. And I'm gonna bring this part down. Now I'm gonna deal with that power. I'm gonna drag those powers forward. So drag this forward, drag this forward, and that becomes two ln of x minus one half ln of 4x plus one. And that is our end answer. And don't forget to put those in parentheses so you know it's all 4x plus 1. Ta-da! Okay, I've got a you do for you. This is similar to the one I did two slides ago. Can you do it? Um, the only hint I would give you for this, because it's pretty simple, is that it, in my previous one, it was either ln or log. I can't remember. Um, but it was just log of 12, yada, yada, yada. My base was 10. So I could just write log of 12. However, here your base is not 10. It is 13. Make sure you're writing log base 13 throughout the whole set. Here I have another one for you. Again, this is similar to the one I did two slides ago. It is a quotient rule. Make sure you can do this question. Okay. 
Then I have the condensation of logs. And so this is, um, we're working backwards. So we're identifying power rules, product rules, and quotient rules, but backwards. So we have to identify a product rule as addition and a quotient rule as subtraction and a um, power rule as a coefficient in front. So this, I can recognize this is a power. This is also a power. I see this is a quotient. And here you have um, x plus 6, uh, sorry, you have x plus 6 altogether. So this is not a product. This is just kept as is. So make sure you recognize that, okay? So let's actually work through this. Let's do this bit by bit. We're going to deal with this quotient first. So I'm going to do, um, oh, sorry, I'm not going to deal with the quotient first. I'm going to deal with these powers first each individually. So I'm going to yank that power back. So that's going to become log base 3 of x to the fourth minus log base 3 of x plus 6 to the one third. And hold on, what do I know when I've got a fraction that's actually a root? So I can rewrite that as log base 3 of x to the fourth minus log base 3 of the cubed root of x plus 6. Now I can deal with that quotient now that everything is nice and neat and compacted. So that's actually going to be log base 3 of x to the fourth over the cubed root of x plus 6. And that is our end answer. Um, now there could be a possibility to rationalize this denominator because we don't typically like roots in the denominator, but I'm not going to worry about that right now and today. And here I have another cond condensation or condense of the expression. So the first thing I'm going to deal with is this power and this power right here. So that becomes ln of x minus 4 to the 6th plus ln of x cubed. Now this plus tells me it's a product. So that becomes ln of x cubed times x minus 4 to the 6th. And it's that whole bit. And that's our end answer. So now I have some problems for you. Again, I would highly recommend that you dealt with this power and this power first before dealing with that product rule. <laughs> uh, so I just, I know it's a lot that we've been going through. It's, it's a lot to take in all of these steps, all this condensation, all these properties. Um, and so really all this is, is just manipulation of our equations. So I'm hoping that you're powering through this. I believe in you. You can make it through. Um, so our final real thing that we really have to talk about is the change of base formula. And this is actually kind of simple. Um, this is when you, if you're working with something that has an inconvenient base, a base that you don't necessarily recognize or can't work with off the top of your head. So this simply tells me this little formula right here, which is hard to read and hard to understand. So the easier way to see it is if you actually do it. What this is basically telling me is I'm going to take the log of my, um, sorry, the log of my parameter, I guess would be the easiest way to say that, divided by the log of my base. That's the easiest way I could tell you that. So here, this is my parameter. That's what I was talking about. So this was actually going to be written as log of 5 over log of 3. And if I plug that into a calculator, I get approximately 1.47. But guess what you can actually do? Instead of seeing these as logs, you can also see that as the ln of 5 over the ln of 3, and you should get the same approximate answer. Okay, so here I've got one more for myself. So this is going to become the log of my parameter over the log of my base. I plug that into a calculator, and I got approximately negative 2.58. Now I have two for you. I hope you pause and do this, plug it into a calculator. Okay, so I'm gonna actually show you that answer so you can check if your calculator was correct. Okay, and here is your second one to attempt on your own. And here is your answer. That one is approximately, oop, that's the wrong one I'm looking at. Approximately negative 2.096. All right, so some closure, okay? We talked about properties of logs, and I know it was stressful, and so here's my little octopus guide to maybe help de-stress you from what might have gone a little bit quickly, but again, you can rewatch as many times as you need. You can work those problems as many times as you need. Um, we simplified, we expanded, and condensed, and so this is just about manipulating properties of exponents. You really have to get used to that, and you really have to get used to seeing a number as its multiple or as its parts, as it's, that's what we're doing here. And finally, we had a change of base, which is the log or natural log of the parameter divided by the log or natural log of the base. Okay, I'll see you guys next time.